Today we're going to talk about some good news for Democrats in Michigan ahead of midterms, and I interview Congressman Jamie Raskin about Trump's Mar-a-Lago crime spree, what we can expect with the next round of January 6th committee hearings, and his message to independents and Republicans ahead of November. I'm Brian Teller Cohen, and you're watching No Lie. Okay, so some more good news this week in what's been a really, really good summer for Democrats, and it comes in a swing state. So in Michigan this past week, uh, the Republican-led Board of Canvassers, which is responsible for determining what ballot measures make it onto the November ballot, they'd rejected a referendum that would allow voters to add protections for abortion rights uh, to their state constitution. Um, to be clear, there were hundreds of thousands more signatures than were actually required to get that measure onto the ballot, but the Republican-led board had decided that there were some spacing issues between some words, and so clearly the people who signed that ballot uh, must have been confused, and so clearly that measure wouldn't qualify for November. So the Republican-led board ultimately voted against including it on the ballot for midterms. Uh, pretty grim, pretty dark that the Republicans who are entrusted with executing these laws are so shameless that they'll do whatever they can to actually uh, ignore those laws for their own personal partisan benefit. But there's good news. The decision was appealed to the Michigan Supreme Court, which voted to overturn the decision of the state board and put that referendum on the ballot. Uh, the chief justice called the board's rejection attempt, quote, a sad marker of the times. She wrote in her opinion, quote, they would disenfranchise millions of Michiganders, not because they believe the many thousands of Michiganders who signed the proposal were confused by it, but because they think that they've identified a technicality that allows them to do so. A game of gotcha gone very bad. Now, it's pretty obvious why Republicans tried to do this. Just look at Kansas. Like, this abortion question is devastating for the GOP. If two-thirds of voters in a red state like that, like Kansas, uh, would come out to protect abortion rights, imagine what it's going to look like in Michigan, a state that's already elected a Democratic uh, governor and two Democratic senators. And with close races in Michigan's 3rd, 7th, 8th, and 10th congressional districts, this question on the ballot in November is going to have massive implications all the way up the ballot. So they figured that if they could uh, take the air out of Democratic voters' sales, they would try. But in reality, here's what Michigan Republicans actually accomplished here. First, they, uh, they proved that the Streisand effect was very real, because if you thought that people were going to show up before, when this proposal wasn't super publicized, wasn't a national story, guess what people are going to do now? Guess how many more people know about this, including people listening to this show who didn't know about it before? Like, Republicans tried to score some cheap win. Uh, instead, they not only lost, but they lit a fire under the asses of every single person that they were trying to disenfranchise. And voters see that, by the way. They know when they're being screwed over. Um, remember in April of 2020, uh, right after COVID hit, it was super dangerous. People were dying. There was no vaccine. And there was a Wisconsin state Supreme Court race. And Democrats wanted to postpone that race because... Um, People were dying, and maybe it wasn't the best idea to cram a bunch of people into a polling place five minutes after a global pandemic hit. Republicans brought that question to court. They won. They forced that election to be held anyway. The number of polling places in Milwaukee shrank from like 180 down to five, meaning that a city of 600,000 people had to cram into five polling places in the heart of the pandemic. And guess what happened? People showed up, and the liberal justice, Joe Karofsky, won by like 11 points in Wisconsin. A state that Trump won by less than a point. The lesson being that people do not like to be fucked with when it comes to their rights. But here's another major point. Uh, it's not just Michigan where a referendum like this is going to appear on the ballot. Uh, voters in Montana and Kentucky are going to vote on Republican measures to restrict abortion. And voters in California and Vermont are going to vote on measures to codify abortion rights. Like, think about the implications for the House. Montana's first congressional district is only slightly Republican. That district could be flipped. In California, we've got a ton of toss-up and close races. Uh, we've got um, the 9th Congressional District, 13, 22, 27, where Christy Smith, who I interviewed last week, she's running. Uh, the 41st, 45th, 47th, 49th. In fact, if you go on 538's website, um, if you have just two Democrats running in swing districts win, like, for example, Christy Smith and uh, Pat Ryan, who just won his special election in New York's 18th congressional district uh, just this past week, if you mark those two as Democratic wins, then Democrats are actually favored to win the House 53 to 47. So having a referendum like this on the ballot in a state like California, like Michigan, like Montana even, uh, is massively important. Republicans know that, which is why they tried so hard to prevent it from happening. The ultimate irony, of course, is that this is all an issue of Republicans' own making. 
Like, no one forced them to overturn Roe. They did it themselves. If Republicans didn't want the blowback that comes from shipping women of their reproductive rights, then don't ship women of their reproductive rights. Like, that's the thing. They're all scrambling uh, for these 11th hour band-aids to, to, to quell the bleeding. But at the same time, they're touring the country explaining how women being raped should seek uh, healing through the birth of that child. Explaining how incest victims should have to give birth to their own brother or sister or cousin. Explaining how they're so pro-life that they're banning abortion even when the life of the mother is at risk. That's how pro-life they are. So if Republicans are looking for someone to blame for the raft of abortion referendums that are happening right now across the states, they can start with the Republicans. In the meantime, our job stays the same. It's not to get distracted by whatever desperate distraction attempts Republicans are cooking up. Remember, gas prices have gone down every day for almost three months. Uh, inflation's already peaked. That's coming down. And Democrats have delivered in a massive way legislatively. The biggest climate bill in history, lower prescription drug costs, IRS enforcement on tax cheats, a corporate minimum tax on corporations that pay nothing, veteran health care funding, semiconductor chip funding, uh, student loan debt forgiveness for 43 million borrowers, infrastructure, the American Rescue Plan, uh, a strength in NATO, the leader of Al-Qaeda killed, 10 million jobs added, and a historically low unemployment rate. In the coming weeks, we are also going to see uh, the Electoral Count Act passed. Compare that with Republicans' agenda of banning abortions, banning books, banning the mention of the existence of LGBT Americans, banning drop boxes, banning polling places, and threatening to strip uh, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid away from you. That's what's on the ballot. It is as simple as that. So if you find yourself on one side of those issues, then make sure that you have a plan to vote in fewer than 60 days. Make sure your friends, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers have a plan. Because what happens in November is going to change this country forever. So make sure that you have a say. This week, I interviewed Jamie Raskin about Trump's Mar-a-Lago crime spree, what we can expect with the next round of January 6th committee hearings, and his message to independents and Republicans ahead of November. Here's a little clip from that interview. It's recently come out in an NBC poll that threats to democracy is the number one issue among voters right now in the U.S. What's your message, particularly to independents and Republicans who may otherwise bristle at the idea of voting for a Democrat, but at the same time who recognize that what's happening right now isn't tenable? Well, I'll address both independents and Republicans. I mean, for independents, um, come to a political party that is very big, that is heterogeneous, that has a diversity of viewpoints, uh, where critical thinking is welcomed and encouraged, um, and where we need your intellectual and moral independence. I'm all for that. Uh, we're not a perfect party. We've had flaws historically. I'm sure we've got flaws today. But we are a pro-democracy party, and we're the only pro-democracy party left. So uh, I'm thrilled to learn that two-thirds of independents are coming our way. And I think more than that will come our way. As for Republicans, um, Abraham Lincoln created your party. And Abraham Lincoln created your party as an anti-slavery party, as an anti-racist party, as that was understood at the time, and as a party opposed to bashing immigrants. I mean, the, the Republican Party was determined to beat the know-nothings, uh, a party that Lincoln hated. And he hated the idea that there was a party that instead of trying to encourage people to come to America and to create businesses and to enjoy religious freedom and political freedom and to be part of society, instead uh, insisted on harassing and terrorizing and demonizing immigrants. So um, the, the great political party that Lincoln founded um, as a third party has been turned into an authoritarian cult of personality by Donald Trump. To watch the full interview, click the thumbnail right here on the screen or check out the interviews playlist on my YouTube channel.